Hey, Masa. Uh, to start off, can you tell us a little bit about yourself as well as your company, Uplift? Yeah, sure. Uh, wow. I, it's a big question, but uh, maybe just keep it simple. So, um, you know, I'm just really passionate about bringing about emerging technologies that have an impact uh, positively to society and to the individual consumer. Um, and yeah, that's what I just get really excited about. And so when we founded Uplift a little over two years ago, we built the company with the vision of what we call improving human movement performance across all parts of our life. So really effectively, how do we empower people with technology that uh, they move better and really perform at you know, whatever they're trying to uh, achieve, whether it's in sports, you know, fitness, or even injury recovery, but really in our everyday lives. Mm -hmm. And Masa, from just researching a little bit about you, I found that you have a very impressive resume back in like big corporations. You were at Lego, Apple, and Tesla. And so I was wondering, you know, what made you decide to step away from, I guess, the dream jobs of many young people to start your own business? Yeah, great question. Um, I think there are kind of two main episodes, but really even with all those large companies, it was almost like an internal venture, if you will, because a lot of the times I was tasked to either turn around an existing division, but really looking at new trends and, and especially with technology. Uh, an example of that is, well, actually all three really. Uh, with Lego, it was really robotics and before STEM or STEAM was even a word in education, um, you know, we were looking at using hands-on, uh, fun, engaging curriculum with robots as a way to drive penetration in the schools to help kids learn creativity, you know, problem-solving skills. Um, we launched a number of new uh, Lego schools. It's a place from three-year-olds to 15-year-olds can learn, you know, creativity in a more systematic way after school programs. So very much what I was doing had always uh, entailed kind of entrepreneurialism. But the difference is that I didn't have to go knocking on many doors for fundraising. You know, we had kind of, you know, big company Lego as a sponsor, similar to Apple. Um, just to, you know, talk about the 12 years of ed tech experience. Uh, you know, I was brought on board to launch the iPad into education. And, you know, again, I think that was a little bit before our times, right, where we're looking at how do we use device like a tablet form, like iPad, uh, that can help teachers effectively even teach more and, and bring about a digital learning environment that really improved student engagement. Um, and now, of course, with COVID-19, you, know, you know, a lot of us are trying to figure out how we bring about uh, distance-based learning, right, learning at home. You know, I felt fortunate being part of that those early discussions on you know what that could potentially look like it, now it's just been accelerated right because of the environment uh the health unfortunately the health environment but hopefully you know the learning so that this is really going to bring about more personalized education for example so i don't know if i really answered your question but you know these are the kind of things that really tug at my heartstrings because one you can play around with the latest you know newest coolest technology but more importantly how that really translates to really helping, uh, you know, people in the end of the day, uh, in this case, to, you know, learn more effectively or to teach more effectively. Mm -hmm. No, that's awesome. And just going back to your company, Uplift, how did you first come up with, you know, the original idea for this business? The worst way to find a company is to have technology looking for a problem. I mean, this is classic, right? As a startup, you really, it's probably from a personal story where you found a pain point. And then you're like, hey, I don't get it. Like, why doesn't this exist to help solve that pain point? You know, those are usually the most powerful because it's really personal. Um, and that's important, right? Because doing a startup is tough as nails. And if it's really something that you care about, you know, it's easier to persevere. Uh, but right. the other reason is that, you know, technology for technology's sake is, could be a nice to have versus like something that's really, really critical, right, out there for, a, for many users. Um, and so with Uplift, um, you know, I was very fortunate to come and meet my two co-founders from a previous startup, uh, Jonathan and Rahul. And these guys are like some of the brightest engineers that you'll find on the planet, right, from their backgrounds. Um, and, you know, we were really passionate um, with the prior startup that we were building, which had to do with contextually aware technologies. How is it like the best tech we believe is when it's invisible to the user 
the tech kind of adapts to you, not the other way around. So back in the day, I used to go to CrossFit a lot, but then realize when I'm overexerting myself or pushing myself hard, I would kind of injure myself. And then I thought, like, there's all these cameras in the gym. Like, I don't get it. Like, why can't we tap into these cameras? And so it would notify you, right? Or notify your trainer when you start to uh, push yourself too hard or your form, you know, is starting to crumble. And that was sort of the aha moment for us saying, oh, my God, like, this is a great way of, of kind of weaving the technology that we so care and believe in into something that, we can, man, we're not the only ones who must have this issue. Mm-hmm. Well, that's that's really cool. And uh, what would you say was the most challenging moment for you so far in running your own business? You know, I mean, I think I'll go back to what I was just saying earlier from your question. You you really, really, as soon as possible, want to find a true acute pain point that you're trying to solve. And again, you know, whether that is something you've experienced or you have a bunch of users that you have seen. Because um, I feel getting to product market fit as soon as possible is key, right? You know, I think looking back, we've had a lot longer but exploratory phase, I think, around that. Um, I think on the big picture stuff, we, we kind of knew what we really wanted to do and solve. But then it's, you know, the devil's in the details, right? So exactly what is that product? You know, the V1 or better MVP that proves, you know, there's that product market fit. So, you know, if I were to go back in a DeLorean, and time travel back to myself and or ourselves back in November of 2017, it would definitely be like, guys, you just got to accelerate the MVP um, mm-hmm. market fit sooner than later. Mm-hmm. And kind of on the flip side, what would you say, you know, what has been the best or most satisfying moment for you so far? Yeah, no, great question. I mean, there's a few... Obviously, landing your first customer deal, you never forget, right? That's a sweet moment. And I think it's also very important. As fast as you move for a startup, you have to celebrate, you know, together with the team, those moments. Uh, But then, you know, the next day, don't dwell on it. Um, But really, you know, I would say it's really when COVID hit us. And as an organization, uh, we had to make them tough decisions, right? But I, I, you know, to this day, you know, and I get a little emotional about this, but the team really, really signed on, doubled down. Um, and there was pain, right? Like we had to cut expenses and, um, you know, it really meant having to really, really pull through and, 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 and extra crazy hours around, you know, around moving fast to bring about our, you know, which is our current product, Uplift Coach, that we're about to launch this week, which is listening to the market and figuring out, hey, a lot of our clients are hurting. Sports is canceled, it's postponed. They don't know when they can get back into their facilities. But yeah, uh, you know, coaches very much are trying to desperately engage their students or top athletes. They're using Zoom like we're doing right now, but it, you know, we all know Zoom is, it's easy to use and accolades the Zoom, but it's not a coaching tool, right? It wasn't built for that purpose, it was built for a corporate conferencing. So when we put a plan in place saying, hey, we, because our whole mission is to uplift people, right? We said, hey, let's, a rallying cries let's build an incredible tool that will really empower coaches and their athletes who are stuck at home or we say benched at home uh, so they can be top of their game ready at a moment's notice to go back onto the field or the court and then, uh, you know do what they do best right to perform yeah i mean that's kind of a long story to your question but it's really uh, being appreciative you know of the team to uh, rise to that challenge um, and building something that you know hopefully the world hasn't seen and then uh, more importantly, that this is a tool that once we place in the hands of, two, of coaches and athletes, they can't live without. And then the minute that happens, you know, it's been worth it. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. And do you have any advice for someone like me who's still a student but is interested in entrepreneurship and wants to potentially start a company in the future? Yeah, I'd absolutely say, like, don't do it, man. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Why would you want to do it? What is the reason, right? What is the why? Yeah, and, and it's, you know, it, it has to come from within. Um, I, I mean, I think really if there's anything, right? And by no measure, I don't consider myself a successful entrepreneur, right? I think that the uh, scorecard is yet to be written. It's tough, right? It's really, really a tough. How do you know if you have the grit or the perseverance for that? And that's why I say 
it comes down to the why. Like, why do you really want to do that? And if you have that, like, then, you know, that's great, right? It's so rewarding to be kind of a band of rebels or a band of people who might be misfits or, you know, see the world a little differently and believe they can contribute by bringing about a vision of something uh, that people don't know yet that they need. So that's exciting. But you have to be kind of built for that and be ready for that. And again, I, you know, I know I'm repeating myself, but I think the only way to really truly be able to do that is you have to be super um, engulfed and passionate in, in what you're doing. Mm -hmm. it, has to be, it has to come from a place of authenticity. Mm -hmm. And before we end, I've also prepared eight uh, rapid fire questions. So just try to answer them as fast as possible. The first one is, if you could have a superpower, what would it be? Uh, I would say with my hat, on the, with a CEO hat, customer empathy. That's awesome. And the second one, what's your favorite Tesla model? Nah, gosh. <laughs> um, all right, well, that's funny. You know, it's just maybe it's the one because I was so every day in, day out around, but the Model S to me, I think was a turning point for the company. Um, I mean, you know, Roadster looks cool and everything, but it's a super expensive toy for a really, you know, point, 1% of point one percent of the population could afford it. I, I really think Model S put Tesla on the map in terms of, hey, this is something that could be affordable, but really gave a glimpse into the future the functionality, but the form is like awesome. And hey, it's like your iPhone, right? It constantly uh, updates itself and freaking drives it too, right? So like um, it redefined what we think of mobility. Mm -hmm. And what's something new you learned in quarantine? You know, that saying about in order to go fast, it can help to go slow and then go fast again. And there's a lot more time to think and pause and be more mindful. And I think for that, personally, um, it was for the better, both not just professionally, but also um, you know, in personal life as well. And we had a chance to redefine everything that's more important, that should be important, and those that might not be as important that you thought was important. Mm -hmm. And next one, what time do you usually wake up every day? So usually still anywhere between 6 and 6.30 a.m. Uh, I like to get a kind of a jump start on things. Um, and that's really important to me even during COVID because I want to communicate, keeping the same routine and schedule is really important to have that kind of regularity, right? And what's something that you can't live without? Coffee. Oh, I was just, my next question was actually coffee or tea, but I guess you answered that. <laughs> but the Western half of me is coffee and the Japanese side of me might be tea, but man, I tell you now with <laughs> these back-to-back -back Zoom meetings and like our push to launch this thing as fast as possible. I mean, companies take two years to launch something like this. We're doing it in two months. So yes, coffee is my best friend. <laughs> Not to put a plug, but pre right before the uh, quarantine and the lockdown, or here in California, where we say uh, shelter in place order, mm -hmm. um, I had a hunch that retail will not come back for a while. So the, the very first thing, or I should say the last retail store experience I had was to go to a home goods stores and right. I bought a little kind of slightly expensive coffee machine, espresso maker. And yeah. man, that's an investment, you know, decision of my life or recent life. Because that thing is uh, working for me 24 um, seven. <laughs> that's awesome. Um, another question, who's your greatest source of inspiration? For me, um, if I just stick professionally, I, I really think it's, uh, it's those bosses that really inspired and those that sucked. <laughs> and um, really trying, because I, I really do believe out of something, even a bad experience, there, there is something, so there's some great learnings that come out of that. Um, in fact, some of, because of those, it's actually pushed myself to um, go into another direction that was all for the better. This is the last question. Um, what is the best advice you've ever received? Even if it's a hard conversation, it's, it's important to have that sooner than later because people will respect, although it might be not what they want to hear, uh, it's usually for the better for both parties. Uh, I don't, it's not a crazy inspirational note maybe to end off of, but it's something that is more often super relevant these days. Mm -hmm. And 
it kind of goes back to that quarantine question you had about, you know, what did I learn in these last few months of quarantine? And it's really trying to find that voice of authenticity, because I think in the end, that will steer you for the better, whether that means there's an inner entrepreneur in you that's willing to get out, so you should go find your own company, or, hey, maybe you're better suited because the way you're built, you're much more effective in a larger organization, right? And helping to lead people there. Or like, hey, like I love quarantine and I love not having to socialize and being with people because I'm spending all this time finally writing that novel, you know, that mm -hmm. finding that offer uh, in me because I really just needed time to put pen to paper or kind of keyboard to digital script. Um, so yeah, I, I would just say like, just find your inner voice, man. Mm -hmm. That would be so much for the better for you and for society. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Well, that's it for today's interview. Thank you, Masa, for taking my time to do this. I wish you and Uplift the best of luck and stay safe. Yeah, thanks for those kind words. Thanks for you know this opportunity. I don't know if this is the kind of thing you're looking for, um, but um, hope you know something here was maybe useful, if not entertaining. <laughs>